For more on this, we're joined now by Eleanor Clift. She's a political columnist with the Daily Beast. Thanks for joining us, Eleanor. Wildfires, flooding and hurricanes, they've intensified, but so has the cost on the US taxpayer to recover. How is an economic issue like this aired politically? Well, normally the both political parties rally together to provide funds for disaster relief. The problem now is that the funds for the disaster relief are tied to aid to Ukraine. And aid to additional aid to Ukraine is very controversial on the Republican side. Plus, you have a faction within the Republican Party in the House that really wants to bring, a govern, bring government to a halt. They're threatening to shut down uh, the government by not providing funding. So you have the partisan bickering. Uh, going back and forth. Plus, you have the real challenges. This is significant amounts of money. As you pointed out, we're only seven months into this year, and there have been 15 uh, natural disasters, each one costing over a billion dollars in damages. So uh, the Federal Emergency Assistance Fund is going to run out of money mm -hmm. in mid-September. Government funding runs out September 30. And so far, there's no evidence of a deal being cut between the two parties. And the White House is holding firm that they don't want to uh, separate the funding for natural disasters plus the additional aid for Ukraine. Why so, is that? Why, why don't they want to separate it? GOP lawmakers want to limit spending, and they also want to separate it from the funding for Ukraine. Why is it that those two funds are grouped together? because the funding for Ukraine might not go through if it's not tied to something that both parties uh, endorse overwhelmingly. And you have, again, this faction in the Republican Party, which is a small faction of overall Republicans do support funding the fight in Ukraine, uh, but some don't. And it's become a political issue with uh, the former president who's running to win a second term uh, he's opposed to additional funding for Ukraine, as is his nearest uh, competitor, the Florida governor. So it's a very controversial issue that will, can only get through if uh, Republicans feel they have what we call political cover, that they have to vote for the funding mm -hmm. to help the, their fellow Rep Republicans in states that are hard hit. Right. Uh, that's the only way they'll support the Ukraine funding. And we know that climate change or, you know, natural disasters don't discriminate. The FEMA administrator met with Governor Don Ron DeSantis in Florida on Thursday to get a sense of the damage from Idalia and report back to the president. But when Biden went there yesterday, DeSantis wouldn't even meet with him. How can federal and state governments effectively work together and sort of diffuse those internal tensions to try and meet the needs of these people who are suffering from these uh, disasters? You know, I think local officials are doing fine working across party lines. You have another Florida senator, Rick Scott, who doesn't agree with President Biden on virtually anything. And he showed up because he's running for re-election and he needs some of those voters who are not, you know, firmly en en entranced in one party or the other, the independents. And so he turned out to be very supportive of President Biden. And uh, the Florida governor is nervous about being put in the same position as a New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, in 2012, when he and uh, then President Barack Obama uh, hugged as they and appeared to get along very famously when they toured the damage from Hurricane Sandy. And that hug or that handshake or whatever it was, I don't remember anymore, but it helped uh, doom uh, Governor Christie in a presidential campaign that he ran earlier than this one. And so Florida Governor DeSantis doesn't want to be seen as being too friendly mm. to President Biden when he's running in a partisan political sure. primary. But so there's so it, much it's, politics. It's politics. <laughs> of course there's politics. But, you know, given the summer we've just had, not just here in the U.S., but internationally, you know, do you think that America as a whole, the American taxpayer, will look upon, you know, funding for recovery efforts like this as something that's a necessary evil, something that the country needs to fund? Or do you think it will continue to divide Americans moving forward? Oh, I think most people support all of the the funding to help their fellow citizens, whatever their politics, in all the different states. But, you know, American, American taxpayer isn't keen to spend money 
uh, to ward off climate change if it personally cuts into their pocketbook. So it's a challenge for politicians. You know, it's that old saying, you know, a, 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 dime, a penny spelt now will save you a dime later. That uh, mitigating the effects of climate change, if it's done now, will save a lot of money down the road. And so politicians have to figure out a way to convince the American people that this is, you know, it is wor a worthy cause to combat climate change or we're all going to, you know, drown in our in our own pollution. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it is, it's a question of saving the planet. But mm -hmm. people don't like to consider things that they still feel are off in the future. Sure. But uh, climate change is actually not off that far in the future. It's, it's, I think it's here. here. No, it's Eleanor here. Clift, appreciate your time. Political columnist with The Daily Beast.